Welcome back. Before I introduce you to the guests who are joining us for the last bit of our show, we want you to know in response to an earlier question, we will televise nine Nike events this year, plus the PGA Tour qualifying school. Great pleasure to welcome to our show tonight two fellows from Top Flight. We have with us John Hoagland, who of course is the Managing Director of Golf Balls, and Mike Sullivan, the Vice President of Research and Engineering. And as people probably are aware, Top Flight has come up with two new golf balls specifically designed to be played with somebody else's golf clubs. Fellas, how did the idea come about? Well, Peter, the project started in about 1992 when we were trying to match a ball to oversized woods. That's when oversized metal woods were starting to become popular. Uh, as we did a testing, and we tested with hundreds and hundreds of, of live players measuring their launch conditions, ball speed, spin rate, and launch angle. Those are the three critical parameters that we track in developing a golf ball. We found that, first of all, there were an awful lot of Callaway and TaylorMade clubs out there. So it was a logical first step for us to try to match a ball to those clubs to get some of these new technologies in the hands of the most people we could. What we've come up with are two individual products, two separate products that both utilize multi-layer technology that we pioneered in the Stratoball, as well as perimeter weighting that give us enhanced, la enhanced launch conditions with Callaway and TaylorMade clubs, giving a better combination of distance and accuracy for most golfers. What benefits do your tests show will accrue to avid golfers who play a significant number of rounds a year, who buy tailor-made clubs, who buy Callaway's product. What are, the re what are the specific results in their view uh, to the ball meeting those particular clubs? You want to handle that, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, we've done extensive testing with, uh, with machines and with live players, and what we found is that most people see an increase in distance and an increase in accuracy. They have a, land a tighter landing area. Again, the critical parameters to the ball are, are uh, multi-layering and perimeter weighting. And it's very important for people to realize when using oversized clubs, although they tend to get the ball in the air rather quickly, and it's easy to get the ball airborne, they put a little bit too much spin on the ball. So these balls are designed to bring that spin rate down a little bit to maximize distance. They have enough spin to work in concert with the gear effect that's built into a club. Uh, gear effect's a little bit difficult to describe, but people don't hit the ball on the sweet spot of the club. They hit a little bit to the toe or a little bit to the heel. And when you hit on the toe, the club head will rotate clockwise, putting a counterclockwise rotation on the ball, which will bring it back into play. So these balls are an optimal combination of distance and still enough playability, still enough cover hardness to give spin. Balls also work very, very well with irons. Again, they're designed to work with a high launch, high spin condition. Were you going to come in yeah, on something like that? The testing we did was both hitting them on the sweet spot and on the toe and on the heel so that we got it well rounded. That's right, John. And John? You're drawing attention to Callaway's product. You're drawing attention to TaylorMade's product. Why are they unhappy about what's going on? Well, they're, um, I, can't, I'm not, I can't speak for them. They're, Why do you believe that they're unhappy? Well, uh, they're concerned about uh, uh, two issues, uh, consumer confusion, because we did something totally new and innovative. That is, we put a club on a package. And sometimes when you do something innovative and new and different, people don't like it. Uh, their second issue is they uh, are concerned that the claims that are made on the packaging may not, they feel may not be true. However, we are very happy with 100 years of, of testing at the Spalding and the testing we did behind these balls that the consumers are going to be very pleased with the results of this product. What level of interest has this generated from people who play golf so far? It's been terrific. It's been one of Spalding's best introductions ever. Uh, ever since the PGA show, it's been the talk of the of, of consumers in the industry. So we think we're off to a great start with the two new products, with the systems. Now, it's hard to believe that he's been doing this for 20 years. He doesn't have a gray hair on his head. He is almost 40 years old. I believe he's the youngest vice president at, at Top Light Spalding since Bobby Jones in the early 30s. And I'm surprised that this whole process hasn't given you a couple of gray hairs. You have not, however, designed or marketed a particular strategy for your own mixing and matching of balls and clubs, but rather have come up with, as Dean Beeman would have described it last Monday night on Golf Talk Live, a prescription golf ball for someone else's golf clubs. Why haven't you done the, own, the same thing for your own equipment? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that this technology that we have in golf balls and our 100 years of innovations, we have hundreds of patents, over 80 people, spending over $10 million a year on golf ball technology. So we do have the tools to design a ball for every club in the bag 
Right now, people say, why don't you have a club for a ball for your Intimidator club? We find the best ball for most people using an Intimidator club right now is a Strata Advanced Golf Ball. But again, we wanted to use this technology to benefit the most golfers we could. So it was logical to aim for the, 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 uh, the Callaway and the TaylorMade clubs, which are so predominant right now. Now, we're seeing the packaging. I wonder, John, if you would be kind enough to tell us your thoughts behind the marketing of the product, why the disclaimer was written the way it was, why it is the proportionate size that it is. Well, we had, uh, Peter, we had two objectives when we did the packaging. The first one was to make it very clear it's a top flight product, which is very clear from the package on the top, on the sides, and also on the sleeve. The second was to make sure there was no misrepresentation of it's a ball club system, a ball built to work with a club. And what better way to show the consumer what that is than to show the club on the package. And on each top of the box, in the, in the bottom right hand corner, on the bottom of the box, on each sleeve is a disclaimer that says that Callaway or TaylorMade had nothing to do with the product. Now, both I could read it, but I think you've got it on the screen. So. Both companies, TaylorMade and Callaway, have indicated that they plan to introduce their own golf ball for their own line of golf clubs. Was this a particularly clever uh, marketing campaign on your part to have developed it and to put it out in the marketplace before those balls are even developed and or tested? Well, I, you know, clever is a funny word. When, when Mr. Callaway came in the booth at the PGA show, he used that same word. Uh, we prefer the, the word that was used by uh, the court last week, which is innovative system. It's an innovative idea. It's just the start of what's going to happen, we think, in golf balls in the future, which is going to be tying ball to club. Uh, we've got 100 years, as Mike said, of experience designing and manufacturing golf balls. And uh, we came to the market with two because, as Mike said, as we did testing over the five years, we realized that in oversized metals that Taylor made and Callaway had a large percentage of the market. Now, I realize that neither of you are attorneys by training or by practice, but in terms of the process, Callaway has made the first foray in the legal system and was denied its motion to suppress your opportunity to deliver product. What is, as you understand it, is now the next step in that process? Well, um, what they were, were denied was a, a temporary restraining order keeping us from shipping the product. The product started shipping last week. It should be on the shelves across the country by this time. Uh, the next step is, uh, I guess, is to go back into court for a uh, preliminary injunction, which I'm not sure when that'll occur or, or if that'll occur. By designing golf balls for their golf clubs, Mike, are you not clearly acknowledging the quality and popularity of those particular TaylorMade and Callaway clubs? Yeah, we're simply acknowledging the popularity of those clubs. As we stated at the show, they're not the best clubs, they're the best selling clubs. And we thought to take advantage of these new technologies that we have in ball, it would make sense as a first step in matching ball to club to match it to a club that a lot of people have in their bags. Now we asked Callaway and TaylorMade to... Can I just... Consumer, of course you can. Consumers, <laughs> were, consumers were telling us that they were confused, that there are over 1,900 balls on the USJ list. What we're trying to do with this product is reduce consumer confusion, not add to it. We're very simply saying, if you play these type of drivers, we have a ball that we think will maximize distance and accuracy off the drivers. Very simple, very clear, very easy. Now, we asked Callaway and TaylorMade to try to join us, and we gave I'm them, I think, fairly short notice. And Callaway was unable to make it by phone or in person, but George Montgomery, the president and CEO of TaylorMade, has kindly agreed on short notice to visit with us. And when we come back, let's have the four of us have a conversation about everything that's going on and what George thinks about it, and we will do that right after this break. Welcome back to Viewers Forum. We just want to read you a statement from Callaway, or, or actually an excerpt from a statement. In the suit against Spalding filed on February 22, Callaway Golf alleges that the packaging for Spalding's System C golf ball, which contains a prominent image of a Callaway Great Big Bertha driver and Callaway Golf's trademarks, is a misuse of Callaway Golf's trademarks and an attempt to mislead consumers into believing that the Spalding balls are endorsed by Callaway Golf. Now what we'd like to do is to have join us George Montgomery, who is the president and CEO of TaylorMade. And George, it's a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for taking the time. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk with you tonight. Our pleasure. Quick question to start things off. Is this bad business or an incredible endorsement of your product? Well, I don't think it's necessarily either one. Okay. 
I think John stated uh, clearly a minute ago that he thinks it's good business, and good business for them in the sense that they're receiving orders and they anticipate selling a lot of product. From your point of view then, given that they are clearly advertising your product indirectly in the lease case, why is this so objectionable to you and your company? Well, the starting point is uh, we really have not had an opportunity to test the balls. We have asked for their test data to support their advertising claims. They haven't been willing to share that data with us. So until we're able to finalize and finish our testing, it's hard for me to really give you a definitive comment on the validity of their claims. But we sincerely suspect that their claims do not have a significant basis in truth. Why do you feel that way, George, if you haven't had the opportunity to complete the examination that would give you that answer? Well, if we start with the basis that we agree with the statement that certain balls for any particular golfer will perform better. In essence, for any particular golfer, once you match a driver with a specific head loft and shaft, different balls are going to perform differently. You need to look at the launch angle, the spin rate, and the launch speed, and you're going to get different distances. So, yes, different balls will perform different, and you can pick them pick an optimal ball for any golfer. But we don't think that you can pick an optimum one ball for all golfers that are playing tailor-made clubs. Specifically, we have 40 different versions of our tie two driver when you have different lofts and different shaft flexes. They can be everything from a hard swinging, low handicap golfer to a senior golfer with a lot lower swing speed and probably a different swing path. And it's really hard for us to believe, without seeing their test data, that one ball is going to fit those two types of players. George, I'm going to let Mike Sullivan, who's the Vice President of Research for Top Flight, respond and ask you a question in return. Go ahead, Mike. Sure. Uh, hi, George. Hi, Mike. I, I don't imagine that TaylorMade has done a lot of golf ball research over the past uh, several years here. But uh, what well, we, let me contradict that. What we've that done is looked at many, further, is many we've golfers. We've done an extensive amount of research. In fact, we already have 11 patents on golf balls. Well, that's, Spalding has over 400 patents on golf balls. Yep. We've led the way in innovations in golf ball for the past 25 years. What we've done is studied the way people hit tailor-made drivers. And you're right, there are a lot of different combinations. There are also some very good similarities. You do get a distribution of launch conditions when you look at the way people hit the ball. And what we've done is provide the golfer with a better fit than any other golf ball on the market with system T-ball. So for most people who use tailor-made golfers, we're not saying for everybody, but for most people who use tailor-made golfers, this will provide them a better combination of distance and accuracy. Is there any reason why you are reluctant then to share that data with the public and specifically with us? Well, I wouldn't say we've been reluctant at all. Uh, uh, this, well, then why this lawsuit have you has thrown a bit of a monkey wrench into our, our plans, but again, we'd be more than happy to share the results at the appropriate time. Uh, well, again, as a golf ball company, that. Our results entail a lot of proprietary data that we generally don't share with competitors. Our obligation is to our consumer, to our com customer, and not to our customer, uh, our competitors. But is George, this not a unique? Go ahead, John. George, uh, uh, we'd be happy to send Mike and his team out to help show you how to do ball testing with these balls. Just well, we might take you, you up with that, John. Uh, but certainly, <laughs> we're not asking for proprietary data. But test data generally is not proprietary. Not. Well, uh, again, we're certainly not hiding anything. We're anxious to get people to use the balls. We think when they play them, they're going to like them. When you and your staff have a chance to test them, and I'm sure you have balls by now, uh, yes, we're we sure that your data will corroborate our data. George, let me, but we're going to need to go to break and end our conversation. But m my last question to you is, what if you ultimately determine that the ball makes sense and it lives up to its claims? What would your company's reaction be at that point? If the ball specifically works better for tailor-made products, uh, I think that's wonderful for consumers. If they can find a better ball, I think that's what tailor-made's uh, mission is, to help people play better golf. And if this helps people pay, play better golf, great. Isn't it nice? Are you planning to introduce your own ball at some point in the near future? Uh, yes, we are. What's the timing of that? We don't have a set launch date on that yet. Is it fair to say that it'll occur in the next 18 to 24 months? Well, I'm afraid I'll have a hard time answering that since <laughs> okay. we haven't established a launch date. Okay. 
George, I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us. Clearly, the, the time spent was too brief. I hope you'll accept our offer to either visit us again in person or on the phone so we can continue to kick around this fascinating subject. Well, thank you. I think there's a lot more that hasn't been said yet, and certainly I, I was interested to hear John uh, think that there's a lot of consumer confusion in selection of balls and that this is a way to get uh, people to select balls easier. <laughs> I believe that, and I believe that's the basis for their attempt to trade off the tailor-made and Callaway trademark values. Well, hopefully in the very near future, and I'm even suggesting as soon as next Sunday, perhaps we can reassemble this cast on the telephone and we can pick up this dialogue that clearly was significantly much abbreviated. Well, thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to another one. And thank you, George. Same yep. here, and thanks for being with us tonight. We're going to take a very short break. We'll be right back. Thank you. John, we've got just a minute or so for uh, you to uh, answer this following question. Do you look forward to continuing what obviously is a spirited dialogue, if we can organize that? Oh, oh of course we, we look forward to the spirited dialogue, but we're, we're most, most interested in uh, consumers. We think consumers are going to be thrilled with the ball. We have either one of the balls, the T or the C, uh, club ball system, and so we're, we're, really, we're really happy to be, as, again, uh, the innovator here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. We'll pick this up soon. Thank you for being here. We'll see you very soon on Viewers Forum. Good night, everybody.